Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and welcome to a very, very special edition of Hot Lap. Now 2016 actually marks a huge year for us here at AM because it's our 10th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and to celebrate, we're doing our biggest giveaway ever, and I'm gonna unveil that to you right now. All right, two years ago, we built and gave away a bagged and boosted 2013 GT. Last year, we built and gave away a Whipple 2015 GT with none other than Chip Foose himself, so how do we top that? Well, as you can see, we have a custom painted 2015 GT behind me here, guys, and we're gonna give it the full treatment. I'm talking boost, full suspension, wheels and tires, some appearance goodies, basically the works. Now, this is gonna be a car you can drive on the street every day of the week, take it to the strip on the weekends, put up a serious number, and it could be yours. But if you're serious about dragging this thing and driving this thing like it's meant to be driven, then chances are you probably prefer to tow it to and from the track. Well, we're also gonna throw in a brand new top of the line race trailer loaded to the gills with brand new tools, low profile jack, impact gun, brand new race star package with radials and skinnies, basically everything you need for a fun day at the track minus the gas. Pretty killer, right? Well, guess what? I'm not even done. You're probably going to need something to tow it with, right? How about a brand new 2017 Ford Raptor, the baddest, most capable factory produced truck around? Yes, we've lost our minds. Anyways guys, the new Raptor is incredibly sick as you probably already know. It's going to be lighter and more powerful than the previous generation Raptor. In fact, the new twin turbo EcoBoost power plant is going to put out more power, going to put out more torque than the previous generation's mighty 6.2 liter. But it also has more ground clearance than the previous generation Raptor thanks to the Fox Racing suspension and those big old beefy BFG all-terrain KO2s. In addition to that, guys, this thing's packing some really tough styling, skid plates, basically everything you need to take it off-road, but with the modern-day creature comforts of a luxury car. So how do you get down on the greatest gearhead giveaway ever? Well, let me tell you. Go to AmericanMuscle.com slash win. You can enter weekly for your chance at AmericanMuscle.com's 10th anniversary giveaway package. But first, it's time to start working on this custom orange GT behind me. You guys know the deal. We're gonna rip it apart, give it a whole bunch of horsepower, but now it's time to get to work. All right, guys, now traditionally with these type of builds, we'd save the big power stuff to the very end, kind of like a big reveal, but not this time around. We're starting big and we're showing you what's gonna be power in this beast. Under the hood, currently Joe and I are installing the 2.9 Whipple blower, and in my opinion, Probably one of the most popular setups when it comes to forced induction with the S550 GTs because honestly guys, they just flat out work. Now some of the nice things I like about the Whipple blower, for instance, first up we have one of the largest intercoolers available for the positive displacement S550 cars along with a massive heat exchanger that Whipple throws in should help combat some of the heat that is oftentimes problematic when going with a twin screw or positive displacement blower. But one of my favorite things about a blower like this is that the power delivery is just instantaneous, guys. You're not waiting for anything to spool up here like a turbo car or a centrifugal blower. Basically, you're mashing the throttle and the power is on tap. Lots and lots of it. Now guys, obviously you can't just bolt up a blower like this and go with the stock fuel system in place. So we went with a tried and true combo, starting with the JMS Fuel Max Booster Pump, topped off with a set of ID1000 injectors from Injector Dynamics. So this is a solid and necessary combo when it comes to safely achieving big power numbers like we are here. Now we went with Whipple's 132 millimeter elliptical throttle body for this build. Now these PD blowers absolutely hate inlet restrictions and the power numbers can really suffer because of that. So by eliminating that puny 80 millimeter factory throttle body, replacing it with the big boy 132 millimeter option, the power number should jump significantly and allow that front feed to really breathe properly. Now, if you guys remember, this is pretty similar to the setup we did on the MMD by Foos car as far as the 2.9 Whipple is concerned. And we made over 600 to the tire with that car. This time around, we are upgrading that throttle body, of course. We do plan on upgrading the headers. Now, speaking of those headers, we have a lot of work to finish up here with the Whipple install, and then we got to get the car in the air, so let's get to it. All right, and when I mentioned earlier, we really want to attack every aspect of this car from a performance standpoint. So even though we probably could have made good power through the stock manifolds with that Whipple in place, we could make more with a set of aftermarket long tubes. So that's where we're at right now. I'm currently finishing up with the Cook's one and seven eighths inch long tube headers, their off-road version here, which in my opinion are definitely one of the most popular options for the S550 GT. 
Now Cook's quality and level of craftsmanship are really evident with these products here. And it comes down to the fitment, man. The fitment is great with these headers and it really does show through with the quality of the build. We did go with their one and seven eighths inch version, which is the most popular size in my opinion for these S550 GTs. The big three inch collector at the very end here loaded with their patented scavenger spike system, which Cook's claims helps increase your exhaust velocity. Better velocity means better scavenging during overlap, which means better smiles for you when you mash the pedal. Finally, guys, the biggest and probably one of the best changes besides the power is the awesome change to your exhaust note. When installing a set of long tubes like this, the car is just gonna sound way more pissed off than it did before, which is a great thing for us, and we really can't wait to hear how this thing is gonna sound with the exhaust. All right, guys, when the header's pretty much wrapped up, it's time for us to show you how we plan on fortifying our drivetrain and our driveline because after all, we really do hope the new owner of this thing enjoys it like it's meant to be enjoyed, drives it hard at the track, so we need to make sure it's up for countless passes and numerous hard launches. Now you can make as much power as you want, but if you don't have the clutch to handle it, that power is never gonna make it to the rear tires. So first up, we're ditching the factory clutch, replacing it with a rock solid option, the McLeod RST twin disc and matching aluminum flywheel. Now the McLeod's gonna be a solid option for a few different reasons. First and foremost, it's a twin disc. Disc. And why is that good? Well, twin disc is a wonderful thing because you have two discs here, doubling your surface area, essentially doubling the amount of power you can hold with this thing. Perhaps the best thing though with the twin disc guys is the pedal feel. Very similar to stock here because you're not using one of those crazy pressure plates. Again guys, we are pairing the RST up with McLeod's lightweight aluminum flywheel option. It's gonna help save some weight over our factory flywheel and even McLeod's steel flywheel option. In fact, McLeod actually recommends going with their lightweight aluminum option here for forced induction applications. Now the McLeod upgrades are definitely the big additions to our transmission here with this build, but we're also installing a couple other smaller parts that I really think will help Help as well. First up, something I recommend to every MT82 owner out there, and that is making the switch to a stainless steel clutch line. Now the clutch lines in these cars are actually made from plastic, if you can believe it or not. So these things can fail, they can swell under high temperatures, especially when you're dealing with an upgraded clutch like we are. Now we're gonna install the stainless steel braided line here from SR Performance. This thing's Teflon lined, braided hose here, stainless steel of course. So it's gonna be pretty much bulletproof compared to that plastic factory line. And overall, it's gonna improve our pedal feel and make for more consistent shifting experience. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up everything pretty much tranny related here, but we do have a few other driveline components that we are going to install to make sure that the new owner of this car can take it to the track, throw a few clutch dumps on a sticky tire, and make sure they get off the line and down the track safely. All right guys, working from front to back here, let's start with the drive shaft shop, carbon fiber drive shaft. Now, I feel like I've sang the benefits of upgrading your drive shaft countless times here at AM, and that's because mainly they're going to be much lighter compared to your factory two-piece drive shaft, and more importantly, much stronger than that factory drive shaft. So why ball out and go with the carbon fiber option? Well, because guys, there are a few reasons. First of which, this thing is going to be lighter than all of your other options out there, even those lightweight aluminum options. Secondly, guys, even though the carbon fiber and aluminum versions are both rated to hold the same amount of power, the carbon fiber option will have three times the torsional strength compared to that aluminum drive shaft. This is the ability to twist without actually breaking. This is gonna be a benefit to you because it's gonna reduce the shock to your drivetrain when you dump the clutch or on the hit. And because it does have that slightest amount of twist or give, it's actually gonna allow your tires to hook up a little better off the line, equating to better 60 foot times. All right guys, so we've addressed one weak spot with the drive shaft here, but we've yet to address the biggest weak spot with these S550 cars, and that is the factory half shafts. So we're upgrading to these monsters. Check these things out. 1400 horsepower rated half shafts from our friends over at the drive shaft shop. Now these things guys are about as bulletproof as they come, maybe even a little overkill for our particular build here, but better safe than sorry because ultimately nothing's gonna ruin your day faster at the track than snapping a half shaft, trust me. So what makes these things so burly after all? Well, for starters, 300 millimeter alloy steel centers here, massive CV joints, chromoly billet cage here, and these cold formed rolled splines, much stronger than your traditional standard cut splines. Basically, bulletproof is the perfect way to sum these things up. If you're worried about breaking something at the track, it shouldn't be these. All right, guys, well, the build's coming along pretty well. I mean, we have our power in place, our drivetrain and drive line mods are in, 
Now we're finishing up with our suspension and we really want to make sure that this thing's fun to cruise on the street, a well-rounded build, but something that can definitely throw down at the strip. So we're getting it set up for that. One company that really has these S550s figured out from a suspension standpoint is BMR. In fact, their lead Mustang guy, Kelly Aiken, has his own personal S550 GT in the eight second time slip range at over 150 miles an hour with 60 foots in the 120. So obviously their products are working. Now I'm just finishing up with the BMR sway bar kit here. Something that's not gonna help the new owner going down to 1320 of course, but something the new owner will enjoy if they do eventually wanna hit some back roads. 25 millimeter rear bar, big old 35 millimeter bar up front. Both of these are three-way adjustable and both do include BMR's adjustable end links, a must when doing suspension on a lowered Mustang. And I will talk about that lowering process here in a minute. These sway bars are gonna help reduce some body roll in the corners and help the car feel a little bit more composed at the limit. After all, we don't want this thing to be a one trick pony. We do want it to do a few things well, turning being one of them. Moving on from those sway bars, we do have a few other goodies from our friends at BMR that will help our cornering a little bit, but they're more focused about getting the car off the line consistently and reducing some of our wheel hop. First up, the BMR vertical links, otherwise known as their rear lower control arms. Now, the factory lower control arms or links in these cars are made from stamped steel. They're loaded with soft rubber factory bushings, which are great for the everyday consumer. They're gonna soak up a bunch of NVH or noise, vibration, and harshness, but they're basically gonna suck for everybody else, right? The performance drivers, the guys tracking these things because those soft rubber bushings, what they do is they deflect or deform under load, and that's what's gonna cause the bad wheel hop that these things are notorious for, along with poor traction. Now the BMR end links or vertical links are a huge upgrade over the factory part because you're looking at T6 build aluminum here and we did go with their spherical bearing option. It's just gonna offer a much more consistent performance whether you're doing straight line launches or some aggressive handling situations. In addition to those vertical links from BMR, we also did BMR's adjustable rear tow links here which is gonna help keep our IRS in check and help reduce that wheel hop we just talked about. Again, huge upgrade over the factory parts they're replacing in both construction and material materials and a really solid and nicely built part overall. Now I really like this part because it eliminates those factory eccentric bolts that you usually find back here, which are notorious for moving around or shifting or deflecting under load. Instead, BMR throws in these lockout plates here, which does eliminate those bolts, instead moves all of your toe adjustment to the rod itself, making for easy on-car adjustability when it does come time for an alignment. Finally guys, we have one more part from BMR that we did install here on this car that is definitely geared towards drag racing, and that is the BMR drag racing lowering springs. Now besides being really good when it comes to the track time, I really like the stance these things are gonna give us. A little lower than an inch up front, just a little less than that in the rear, which means a whole lot of rake, which always makes for a tough stance in my opinion. But again, make no mistake about it guys, these things are designed for one thing and one thing only, to do good at the track, and the spring rates certainly reflect that. You're gonna be looking at a 150 50-pound front spring in conjunction with the 800-pound rear springs here, which again, in drag racing, the idea is to run the lightest front spring possible. That way, it allows for easy weight transfer to the rear, helping your traction and your launch overall. Working with those BMR drag springs, there's something in here that I'm really excited about, and that's the Viking Crusader double adjustable rear shocks. Now, these things are Viking's high-end option, just a step above their very popular B226 option. The Crusader is gonna give you a whole lot to play with here, guys. You're looking at 22 levels adjustment when it comes to rebound and 19 levels adjustment when it comes to your compression. So again, a lot of settings to play with when it comes to the track time and getting this thing to leave properly. Unfortunately, Viking hasn't released a front strut option yet for the S550, at least at the time of this video. So luckily for us, our friends over at Kony actually hooked us up with one of the first set of struts available for the S550 GT with their very popular popular Coney Yellow. Again, fully adjustable when it comes to the dampening and something, again, the new owner will be very happy they have on the car. Of course, we have the BMR springs up here as well, but guys, we got the power, we got the driveline stuff, we got our suspension taken care of, and we were also able to bolt up our exhaust system. Now, keep in mind, remember, we went with the Cook's one and seven eighths inch long tube headers. We figured it'd be a great idea to pair that with their full three inch catback, so that's what we did. Now, I like this catback for a few reasons. First, we got their X-pipe in place here, but we also eliminated that factory neck down. So we got a full three inch diameter from basically these collectors. We got their free flowing mufflers and finally their black tips. Now that should look really good, but more importantly, this combo with those long tubes should sound even better. Now keep in mind guys, this thing can be yours, right? This Mustang, along with the fully loaded race trailer and that brand new 2017 Raptor, it can be in your driveway, but you have to go to AmericanMuscle.com win for your chance to enter. You can enter one time a week and good luck.
All right, guys, what build would be complete without a new set of shoes? And we actually have two sets to talk about here with this build. First up, let's break down our street setup here. We got the RTR Tech 7 wheels in charcoal, 19 inch in diameter. Now, in my opinion, probably one of the sickest wheels currently available for the S550 cars, and they're from none other than the man, Vaughn Gittin Jr., and the crew at RTR. Now, the first generation RTR wheel was probably one of the most popular designs for the S197 cars, and the guys at RTR are looking to keep that going here with the S550s and the new RTR Tech 7s. Now there's really nothing quite like these wheels out there right now and they look so damn good here on our bright orange 2015 GT. Again guys, we do have the 19 inch staggered in charcoal. They're wrapped with a very good Mickey Thompson Street Comp tire. A great setup for all around street use, but keep in mind with that Whipple up front, probably gonna blow these things off at will, which I'm sure would make Vaughn and his guys really proud. But we're not done. This is just the first set to talk about. We got one more set to break down, so let's go check those out. Now, burnouts and drifting can be a whole lot of fun, believe me, I know, but like the old saying goes, spinning ain't winning, and that's especially true if you plan on taking this thing to the track. Now, like I told you guys at the very top of this video, AM's throwing in the Mustang, of course, but we're also hooking you up with a fully loaded race trailer, a bunch of tools from our friends over at Eastwood, low profile jack, and of course, a brand new drag pack here to help you hook up when you do go to the strip. Now that drag pack consists of a race star package here, they're dark stars, which is a very, very sick looking combo here, wrapped in the Mickey Thompson ET Street SS. This is one of their newer radials. I've heard a lot of good things about this particular tire. And of course, we've got the Mickey Thompson Sportsman skinnies up front. Now besides helping us get some much needed traction at the strip, this package is gonna look so good on the car. In fact, I wouldn't be mad at you if you wanted to leave this package on all year round. But speaking of looking good, we do have some appearance things to throw at this car. We're not going over the top of this one, guys, trust me. But we do have a few solid parts picked out, so let's get to work. Now we've got some of the usual suspects making an appearance here on this build. Of course, MMD contributed a few parts for us that totally transformed the look of this car. Starting up front here, we have their V-Series upper and lower grille, along with their lower chin splitter extension. All three of these parts, totally killer, and again, totally transformed the look of the front end. We also have a new part from MMD, their hood scoop here. While generally I'm not a huge fan of bolt-on hood scoops like this, I will say this one actually turned out pretty good. Looks pretty sharp on the car. And finally, rounding out the V-Series parts, we installed their V-Series rear spoiler, which has been very popular here with the S550. We also replaced just about every single light on this thing with an LED product from our friends over at Raxian. We have their side marker kit, their reverse conversion kit. We also did their interior LED kit, and finally one of their new products, their hood vent signal kit, which is just gonna give the car a small touch of that California special styling. Well guys, this is pretty much it, man. We're wrapped up with this thing. Now it's time to get it moved on over to the dyno, strap it down, see what kind of power this Whipple combination is gonna be putting down to the tire. And finally, I get to go for a spin. All right, guys, well, we just finished up with our dyno runs, and wow, this thing sounded absolutely amazing here on the dyno jet. But check out these power numbers. 725 horsepower, 484 pound-feet of torque at the wheels, mind you. That's good for roughly 850 plus to the crank, which is absolutely mind-blowing considering this is a stock motor 2015 GT. Cars are just capable of so much anymore, it really just blows your mind. And look at this power curve. It's still climbing hard all the way up to eight grand here. Torque curve is nice and flat. That's what you want to see. This thing should be a complete monster out on the street. And speaking of the street, it's time for my favorite part of this build. I get to take this thing out of the shop, shake it down a little bit, and see how it feels. All right, guys, so we're in the car here, finally. Boys and I have been working hard on this thing for the last few weeks. It's making great power, as we saw, over 700 of the tire on the dyno. Thing sounds amazing. One thing I noticed too right away when I got in the car, the clutch. This is incredible. Listen, it's, it is lighter than the factory clutch easily, hands down. But at the same time, this thing's ready to hold eight, 900 horsepower. The lightweight flywheel, the drive shaft, this thing revs like a damn F1 car now. I mean, listen to that. That sounds amazing. And oh yeah, by the way, the Cooks combination doesn't sound too shabby either, right? Now, one thing I really like personally about this car is 
the appearance. In some of our past builds, we've kind of gone over the top a little bit, which is to be expected. But with this thing, we kept it pretty tame. I mean, of course, the front end, we got the stuff from MMD, the spoiler back in the back as well. We got some lighting from Raxium. But overall, I mean, the thing really isn't over the top. And the wheels, oh, I really love the RTRs. We don't want to do any crazy brake stands or anything like that, but you definitely have to get on it a little bit, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Blowing the tires off, 4,000 RPM in third gear, and that Whipple's really starting to breathe. Let's see how she feels in second. Really. <laughs> oh, I can't even have fun in this thing because it's just, it breaks them off too easily. But overall, the car feels really rock solid in the rear. When it does break loose, and obviously you can hear it's breaking loose a lot, there is no hop whatsoever. I mean, it just spins. This thing's awesome. We are gonna take it to the track, so you have to stay tuned to see what kind of numbers this thing's gonna result in. Guys, it's been a really, really fun build. We've done a lot of cool stuff. There's no denying that. But honestly, to be in this car now and to have taken part in the build, this is the coolest build we have ever done, hands down. And I hope a lot of you guys agree with me. I cannot believe we're giving this thing away. It really just blows my mind. And the craziest part is, this is just one of three things we're giving away to one lucky person out there. The car, the trailer, the tools, the damn Raptor. Can you believe it? I mean, the craziest gearhead giveaway ever, and it could be yours. You have to go to AmericanMuscle.com slash win for your chance to enter. You can enter one time a week, so what are you doing? Enter, enter a lot, because believe me, you are gonna wanna see this package in your driveway. Trust me, this thing is awesome. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for future updates with this car, and for all things Mustang, <laughs> keep it here at AmericanMuscle.com.